sexual shame can really keep us back from fully experiencing all the pleasures and benefits of a healthy sex life. But many of us have sexual shame without even knowing it. We get messages about sex growing up and through all of our sexual experiences that greatly influence how we view sex. And in this video today, I'm gonna to cover five signs of sexual shame and how we can overcome our shame to have the sex that we want, that we yearn for, full of pleasure, without shame. So first let's talk about the messages that you received about sex from home, from your community, from your church or synagogue, and from your culture. Were you taught that sex was just for procreation and it's taboo or sin to have sex before marriage? Raise your hand if that was you. Definitely part of my teaching in school went to a, a very religious high school where it was taught that sex is just for procreation and don't ever spill the seed or have sex before wedlock. Did you also learn that only slutty girls were the ones who explored sex early on? Maybe they had, they lost their virgin, virginity at an early age or they had casual sex at any age. You know, do you have judgment around yourself having casual sex or others having casual sex? Or maybe did a past partner shame you for not being good in bed, for being sexually incompetent? Many of us have a combination of all these messages and they can all lead to sexual shame. So I'm going to share five of the biggest signs of sexual shame, and then I'm gonna share five ways that we can overcome it. The first sign is that you disconnect from yourself during sex. People who experience sexual shame can really disconnect from their bodies during sex. Maybe they stay in their heads and they're self-judging, self-critical. Maybe they feel bad about their bodies or their genitalia, or maybe it's like menopause and your body has changed and you're embarrassed about your body, so you kind of disconnect. Second sign is suppression of your sexual needs. And this means that you're not comfortable expressing your desires or your needs during sex. So many women in particular have not experienced orgasm until they start to really get over some of the sexual shame or the sexual fears that they have. And it's really important to speak up. The third sign is having some blocked sexual energy. And this means that your energy is blocked, which can prevent the natural flow of sexual arousal and excitement during sex. So if any of the energy is blocked by being in your head, by suppressing your needs, by having these thoughts that sex is bad, you block the flow that lets sex be pleasurable and fun and without shame. Number four is a fear of intimacy. When we experience sexual shame, there's often a fear of getting close in a relationship. Many people avoid dating because they are so scared of what would happen if they became sexually intimate again. So if this is true for you, this fear can keep you from getting sexual again and having the sex that you want. It's a little bit of a vicious cycle then. You are afraid of sex, so you don't have sex, and then it continues to perpetuate that cycle. And number five is just having any negative feelings about sex. Some people have very deep-seated bad feelings about sex or even masturbation, orgasms. So much is in our past, in our culture, in our just past relationships, family life can influence all of these five signs of sexual shame. So let's talk about how to overcome sexual shame. Number one, focus on the benefits of good sex. Many times we don't even remember that sex can be good or we don't even know that it can be good because we've never had great sex. So the way to really start to overcome it is to really focus on what's possible. Having uninhibited sex, 
with a partner who is going to be safe for you, high arousal, feeling pleasure. These are all incredible benefits that will help you to start to overcome your fear. Focusing on the good and the end result is one of the best ways to overcome fear. Number two, you need to communicate your feelings and your needs around sex. And it's vulnerable and it's hard and I get it, but it starts with creating a partnership with somebody with whom you feel comfortable talking about what you need and want, what turns you on, what doesn't. And again, it's a, a, also about him. Like it's a reciprocal conversation. It's not just a one-sided thing. You're going to also be comfortable enough the goal is to be comfortable enough to also ask him what turns him on, what makes him happy sexually. Having this kind of open conversation will create an incredible safe path to overcome sexual shame. Number three is to experiment sexually. When you start to get more comfortable with sex, you want to start experimenting and exploring by pushing the limits of what you've done before. That can include introducing sex toys or dress up or kinky things or having multiple partners, trying things that you never tried before, having a partner that you would never date before, having casual sex when you've never had casual sex. So you start to experiment when maybe you've always had vanilla sex where one person's on top and the other one's on the bottom and that's all it's been and it's like wham bam thank you ma'am just for the sake of having children and that's how a lot of people have sex and then they really don't have sex the rest of the time that they're in partnership so you want to start to experiment really push those limits number four is to practice sensual self-care and what i mean by that is to really focus on your own sensuality and your own sexual pleasure with or without a partner. Really begin to feel the sensations of your body, to experiment with yourself and with another partner by feeling all the feels of your skin. Maybe you're using hot and cold and different temperatures and different temp types of cloths and materials, feathers and you know people really use many, many different types of things to experiment with pleasure, with sensual pleasure. And number five is to keep noticing shame when it comes up. Sexual shame, if it's been with you for a long time, it doesn't go away overnight. Having this conversation, listening to this video is a first step if you haven't done anything about it up until now. And then start to put these things into place one by one. And notice, if you start to feel shame, just the act of noticing can help you start to have it disappear. You don't give it any energy. You don't go down that rabbit hole of, oh my God, I feel so shameful. You say, oh, that's, that's shame. There it goes again. And kind of be playful about it, be matter of fact about it. And eventually it'll get less and less. The charge in your body will be less and less. So sexual shame is nothing to be ashamed about. There are so many ways to overcome it as I've spoken about today. So it's important to find what works for you and begin to work through your sexual shame so you can have the sex life of your dreams. And if this topic is of interest to you, I am going to be doing a full one hour workshop with a sex coach next month in the Woman of Value Club. We're going to be talking about libido, how to get back sexual pleasure. All of the things that I'm saying today, we're going to go deeper on and we're going to do a workshop for one hour in the Woman of Value Club. It's only $7 the first month, which I mean, come on, for $7, you're going to attend an entire workshop. And then there's a very low cost to stay in the club. You can leave whenever you want. It's a wonderful place to have my expertise and the expertise of many of my podcast guests who do a deep dive with me in the Women of Value Club. So thanks for listening. Thanks for joining. And I will talk to you all soon.